Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today, all of the nerds here to talk about what's been happening recently in the IPL. And today, we're going to be talking about three games. But the first game we're going to touch on is the Chennai Super Kings game, which happened today, where they lost to the Delhi Capitals, much to to Benji's um, sadness, because he's a big CSK fan. But we got to see some impressive stuff from Dhoni at the end. So all that to, to come. So, James, as the as one of the neutrals in this game, what were your overall thoughts? Because I was very surprised by the Delhi Capitals' performance. Yeah, so I think two big uh, lessons that we took from DC, which was their bowling is actually not as diabolical as you might think. Yeah. It just it depends on the day. I think that's that's the first lesson. And the second lesson I learned from this game was that Dhoni needs to bat higher because um, yeah, j- even just higher than Jadeja because towards the end, he was actually like farming the strike from him as if he was just some humble little tail ender. And, you know, Daddy Dhoni came home and he was just like, no, no, son, I'll, I'll have the strike here. He was turning down singles. So th- those are my main two lessons. Um, but just, just like focusing in on DC first, they they brought in Brith- <laughs> they brought in Prithvi Shaw, which um, I thought was a really interesting move because he was an expensive retention, hasn't played any games this season. They're bringing him him in, and he gets forty three at a strike rate of one hundred and sixty. So I think straight away there is vindication for Prithvi Shaw that he was the right person to bring in. But would you say, and this is I guess my first question that I'm going to throw out there, is Shaw and Warner a better opening partnership and does it create a better combination, meaning that Mitchell Marsh batting at four might not be his preferred position, but d- does the overall that work out better for Delhi? <laughs> I mean, I don't think Mitch Marsh should have batted at four. I, I, I understand why Richard Pam came in at three because they wanted to keep the left hand right hand with David Warner going out first. But I think still having Marsh at that number three spot, regardless, I think that's his place. Yeah, we've seen him open for Australia. Yeah, we've seen him bat three for Australia. I think that's a good spot for him. Um, and then for me, Pan feels that like more of a number four role because he's a little bit further into the game. You've got more spinners on. However, it worked out well for them today, really. Like, Mitch Marsh, yes, might not have been as effective as he has been. It took him a while to get into the game, but it worked out for for Rishabh Pant. And to be fair, Mitch Marsh was just turning it on and really starting to go hard. And it took a miracle piece of bowling from Paterana to get him out. Like, Paterana's two deliveries that he bowled to uh, Marsh and Stubbs in the same over. I mean, they were ridiculous. You just can't play them. 150 kilometer hour Yorker on middle stump and 149 kilometer per hour on off stump, both dipping under the bat. Like it took two good bits of bowling to get those wickets. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I think pretty sure provides it, it. What it does is it allows them to have that extra overseas spot with, with, you know, because they've been, they had like a whole top three the other day with, 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 with shy hope in there as well. It allowed them to widen the overseas pool and use some of their fantastic players. Look, look I mean, look at I'm Rick Norkia. He was really good today and he really helped that bowling attack of Delhi. And as you said, James, we've learned that Delhi's bowling attack is quite good. And I'm Rick Norkia was a really important part of that. So yeah, I I think it it it's fine for them. Um, and Delhi impressed me today. Zach, talk to me about Khalil Ahmed. Like, oh. what's happening there? He just bowled very well at the start. I think what's obvious is that Chennai are benefiting from having flying starts from Ratchan Ravindra and Rataraj Gaikwad. So the the game plan for all the teams when they play Chennai should be how do we keep them quiet? And I think Delhi did that perfectly today to keep. Um, Ravindra quite especially because Ravindra we've seen off 12 balls he's normally able to score 30 right he's, he's that that fluent and that brutal but today he just looked far from fluent just couldn't get going and yeah it was really good from Khalil Ahmed up front and it kind of took the sting 
out of the Chennai Super Kings batting lineup. And even though they have a very scary batting lineup that can be absolutely brutal and, and probably chase down this score on any other day, it just meant that they were always playing catch up and, and Delhi's bowlers had the skills to 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 keep them quiet and, and to make sure that they didn't didn't get those scores. I mean, Mukesh Kumar was held back. He normally likes to open the bowling. That didn't happen today. And I thought he bowled really well to kind of just close things out, which meant that when Dhoni came in, and it was awesome, like watching Dhoni smash the ball to all parts, you're like, he's, he doesn't bat much because he's not needed by Chennai. But when he does, the crowd of Delhi fans were all cheering for Dhoni. Uh, and there was a lot of yellow in the crowd, probably for Dhoni. And James, we we're watching it together. Just that guy who was just painted from head to toe in yellow with the word Dhoni <laughs> across his shirt. We just I loved it, him. didn't we? It was just that that is what the IPL is all about, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think as a if you were a Delhi fan and you're in your home stadium and you're watching this match and you're surrounded by people in yellow shirts, people painted head to toe in yellow, absolutely cheering their hearts out. And you're surrounded by a team by by fans of a team that have just lost, and they're cheering louder than you. You'd be really confused, wouldn't yeah. you? It would yeah. be like surreal. It's like, well, am I in the right place? And am I supporting the right team? Has my team actually won? Because th that's the power that Dhoni has. Like he is so so popular. And uh, I mean, going on to what my second lesson was, uh, the the second thing that I'd learned from today was that I really do think that Dhoni should be batting higher. Yeah. Because the first ball he played, he absolutely creamed it for four. It, it was hit so hard. And then he drove a ball for four through cover. And it was kind of on the up. And it was so out of the middle. And straight away, he just, he looked in really, really good touch. And I don't know. I, I just think he's holding himself back a little bit yeah. too much. I well, mean, he's not captain been... anymore. He's well, not a captain anymore, but, so but all he's been doing means. is all he's been doing is netting since the final last year. Like, let's be honest, he's, he's not played a single game. That's that's what 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 he's been doing. And I mean, look at Chennai; they paid big bucks this year for Samir Rizvi to be that finisher. They've got Jadeja, who they want to take over as that role. Actually, that's why they're putting Dhoni back so far. But yeah, you're right. Like, if he was in at, at number six today, it could have been a really different game because it was just a bit of too little, too late for me. Um, Having said that, on, on on what you've just said, James, they were playing at Vizag today, which is Delhi's second home ground. So I don't know if if you've seen, but a lot of the teams have got two home grounds that, this year, yeah, yeah. using a lot of the um, using a lot of the World Cup stadiums. And I think you're going to get the case that if any team is playing against CSK or RCB at their second home, I reckon that they're going to get more. Um, opposition fans than 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 home fans just because of the following for for, for those two franchises yeah. it was a good good win for delhi overall and i thought that that they needed that win more so than csk because csk were already near the top of the table maybe mm. even top of the table before this game so it was much needed win for delhi and um it, it just may, means the competition is going to be a lot closer because we're going to see teams that might not have looked solid or performed well um, that they can win the odd game. So there's still hope for, for James and I with Punjab Kings and RCB who have had some pretty sho some pretty big shockers already. But but yeah, we'll, do, should we talk about the Punjab game now and then we can talk about the Gujarat game? Because oh, we're no, going James, in a really weird order. But It's yeah, a weird sure. order, but let's, do, let's it. do it. Yeah, James, talk to me about Punjab because you said you mentally checked out of the Punjab campaign. Is that still the case or was that just <laughs> straight away after the game that... you were a bit, bit frustrated, I don't know. That that was uh, verbatim what I said. I I, I was uh, I was pretty much over the IPL at that point. Um, it it was disappointing because again, um, much like the game that Punjab played against RCB, it was a game that Punjab should have won. Um, it it wasn't a particularly difficult side that they went against. Uh, the the bowling attack of Lucknow looks really weak on paper. Um, it just so happened that Punjab, uh, they, they bowled horrendously. And we'll get onto that because uh, I think, look who's watching, uh, gave us a CNQ about that. So I'll, I'll read that out in a minute. Um, but yeah, they, they bowled really badly. And then somebody that kind of came out of the woodwork called Mayank Yadav, 
started bowling absolute thunderbolts and just so happens to be, I think, the second fastest Indian bowler of all time. Um, I mean, and it was yeah, ridiculous, so, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he just kind of came out of nowhere and <laughs> tore through Punjab. So so that's great. Um, now, I've got quite a lot I kind of want to get off my chest and rant about. Um, but I think I'll start off by reading out uh, the CNQ, which is from Look Who's Watching, who is a fellow Punjab fan. And he asked, uh, do you reckon, <laughs> and this is a bit of a loaded question straight away, do you reckon that Harsha Patel is the worst pacer for Punjab Kings? <laughs> what the hell is he bowling? And what is this about matchup that Shikha kept bowling the out-of-form Rahul Chahar and not Harpreet Bra? Mm -hmm. And Harshal was still brought to bowl against Krunal in the 20th over when he just had a terrible over against him and Arshdeep had an over remaining. Do you reckon bad captaincy? Now, I think there's wow. only one answer <laughs> that look who's watching is looking for here. Yes. Um, so, uh, yes, realistically, I think it was bad captaincy. So if you didn't manage to cap uh, catch the game, um, the, the, there are a couple of things that look who's watching is getting on here. The first of which is the fact that there were two left-handers into bat. And as a result, Shikha Darwin took Harpreet Bra off. And Harpreet Bra was bowling pretty well, actually, at that point. And he put Rahul Chahar back on. Now, Rahul Chahar, over the last two, three years, has been chronically out of form and, frankly, bad. Um, he, he barely warrants a side in uh, a, a place in the side. As a leg spinner, he has been very weak and not performing up to his standards at all. Harpreet Bra, on the other hand, has excelled himself. He has been a standout bowler in the last few games. And if you're going to have anybody bowling at informed batters, you want it to be Harpreet Bra. And I think far too much, we, we say this time after time, far too much is made of matchup bowling to the point where you're bowling uh, bowlers that just aren't as good against you know uh, batters that you're wanting to get out purely because of the direction they turn the ball but and actually I, I, I just want to say something on that just based on the fact that harpy bra and rahul chahar spin it the same way like i know yeah. rahul chahar's stock delivery is the googly so maybe they were thinking of that but i mean stock. If, yeah. if if rahul chahar isn't bowling well and harpy bra is bowling well then in that situation it makes more sense to go with harpy bra right like that's that's fundamental but if shikha darwin is so het up about the matchups thinking oh well rahul chahar could bowl the googly to help stem the flow you'd rather pick someone like liam livingston oh yeah who we know can spin the ball both ways if you so het up on the matchup bowl liam livingston you'd think right um and then harshal patel i mean he was really good for rcb when they played in the uae and he was really good for two seasons he was one of the top wicket takers and he looked really strong but he kind of went a bit out of form last season. And I think that's that's the problem at the moment is that he kind of came out of nowhere because he had bowled well, okay, over the last few seasons. But then he's kind of dropped off a little bit. And and it's, it's a shame because Punjab are succumbing to some people who are out of form and that's affecting their side. But looking at their batting, I mean, from an England point of view and a Punjab point of view, Johnny Bairstow... He 42 off 29 looked really good. And until Mayan Yadav came on as an unknown quantity in this game, it looked like he was playing a really solid innings. And Benj, I don't know if you want to take over from this point. Like, how did you feel about Punjab's batting? Did you think obviously they fell off with Mayan Yadav, but that opening mm. partnership, what what did you think of that? So yeah, I mean, there mm. it, it yeah, from, from an England perspective, seeing Johnny Bairstow coming out and striking at a pretty good rate and seeing Liam Livingston actually be able to score a few, really promising. Sam Curran, unlucky on the day. I think getting a first baller is 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 never really really what you want. Um, but for me, I think with with Punjab's batting, there was just a, a lack of impetus. I think, yeah, it was a good opening partnership from Bairstow and Chicka Darwin, but Shikha Darwin really should have gone on to score a bit of a faster clip. Look, he he, he faced 50 balls and came off with, with with 70. That that strike rate of of 140 is pretty good if you're anchoring the innings. 
but actually you need people to come out and, and hit sort of 170 around him to to get those runs up, especially when you're chasing 200. Mm. And the fact that the people around him weren't doing that, maybe Shikadaran should have turned it on a little bit sooner um, because I think that, that that lack of impetus really is what got them a bit behind the game. And it meant that by the time that Livingston and, and, and Shashank Shing and Sam Curran were in, it was a little bit too little too late. You know, Jitesh Sharma's in there to be their big hitting finisher as well. But again, we 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 just didn't didn't quite see that. Now, let's not, not take anything away from the Lucknow bowlers who who were, were really good. I think that particularly Krunal had a good day. You know, his his figures don't quite say that, but he's still keeping it sort of under nines and over. And when when the asking rate is is up above, you know, sort of that that not quite that 10 and over mark, but when the asking rate is up high, keeping it a bit more controlled is, is really important. So I think it was a good day out for the Lucknow bowlers too. Yeah. I, so from a non-neutral perspective, um, I thought Shikha Darwin, you're right, he slowed down. He was obviously scared of the ball when it was faster. And he even said in the post-match interview uh, to Mayank Yadav, just leave the ones against um, Mayank Yadav. Now, Punjab needed about 70 off uh, 40 odd mm. at that point. Like the asking rate was rising. The advice from the skipper to leave the ball is embarrassingly bad. That is a shocking call. So, um, yeah, I, Darwin definitely didn't shower himself in glory with his captaincy today or um, went at that game. It, it wasn't a great performance from him from a captain's point of view. Um Obviously, his knock was very good, and it's a shame that he couldn't keep on going. Also, like you, you know, we were complimenting Liam Livingston. He couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. The guy's obviously pulled a hamstring or something. Yeah. So it's looking like it'll be, um, it, I, I imagine he's going to be out for the next game. So I would expect to see Sikanda Raza come in. Come on, Chris who... Wokes. <laughs> well, maybe. I, I would have thought Sikanda Raza is more like for like. And yeah. he's also in form. I, he's been in form for a, a little while. I personally think he should have started anyway. So mm. he's somebody I'm quite excited to see. And hopefully we can kind of rebalance the squad a little bit. I'd like to see Sikandar Raza come in and um, maybe Rahul Shahar come out and we get, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, the good left arm spinner. I'll I'll try and, uh, I'll read it, his name out like phonetically um, and hope that I get it right. It begins with a TH. It is. Oh, Thigarajan. That, something like that, yeah. Um, I've never heard it said out loud, so I can't mm. say it exactly. But it is something along <laughs> those lines of Tane Thigarajan. Yeah, Thigarajan. Thigarajan. Mm. Whatever his name is, him. I'd like to see him because he um, he bowled really well in the Ranji Trophy. He was good in the Side Mashtakali Trophy. Just a very good left arm orthodox spinner. If you can have him and Harpreet Bra from either end, that sounds good to me. You know, yeah. why not stick with what works? And then yeah. if you want to play your matchup nonsense, then Sikanda Raza bowls off spin. So yeah, that's yeah. my uh, that's my rant over. Well, I could I could go on, but I I, I don't think I should. <laughs> very very quickly before we, we move on to to sunrises, because I think we we should. What was going on with Nick Puran being captain? So I think it's because Kale Rahul, um, he's he, he's obviously coming back from a bit of an injury. He's been mm. out for quite a while. So in the interest of him not wanting to injure himself before this World Cup, which he obviously wants to be able to to play play in, um, he is using himself as an impact sub. So he's not fielding. So he's letting Nicky P do the captaincy for him. Right. Um, I don't know how many games that's going to go on for, but... Yeah. Because <clears throat> he was keeping it, in the first it? two games for them, or he was keeping in the first game against Rajasthan, uh, mm. which is odd because normally Quinton de Kock keeps for them. So, yeah, I was just just, just wondering. Yeah. It's good to be blessed with 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 so many um, wicked we, 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 we keeper batters, I suppose. Mm. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a weird one because it just seems a bit selfish that he's kind of looking after himself. <clears throat> he's kind of thinking, I, yeah. I want about four so that I can play for India in that role. And then today he didn't. He opened the batting, and then he's kind of like, like, uh, yeah, 
I don't know. And then also with the Dhoni thing, like, just bat out the order. <laughs> just win the IPL for your team. Don't worry about whatever. The, some... the moving on or something. I don't know. I, maybe somewhere I'm between... Hard. No, I think somewhere between Dhoni's selflessness and Kale Rahul's selfishness is yeah. the perfect level where you, you bat yourself in the exact right position and you do your job for the team. Yeah. So, so like, yeah. But then you can't go too far to a hard pandy level of selfishness where he actually he does too much of a job for the team and that to be the detriment of the yeah. rest. Anyway, we can talk about Mumbai tomorrow. So Sunrisers versus Gujarat, it was quite a stock standard game. And after the fireworks of Sunrisers last game, um, yeah, it, it seemed actually quite quite a boring game to, to today, really. It was just almost a regulation victory for Gujarat Titans. Um, there wasn't really much to shout about. I mean, the main thing I saw was was Mohit Sharma bowled fantastically to restrict Sunrisers. That's really what I took. And then a fantastic knock by David Miller to um, get them over the line quite quickly. Did you boys have anything you wanted to, to say? Because... I mean, I, I don't know. I, I find it quite a boring game. I think the the main thing for me is just regular wickets. Like that's that's the thing that's winning people games. Um, we saw it against Punjab where um after Johnny Bairstow got out, the um they were just able to to lose regular wickets at regular intervals, and we saw it again in the Chennai Super Kings Delhi Capitals game. Delhi were just able to take regular wickets, and that's and that's the key to stemming the flow of runs, and that's what the Gujarat Titans bowlers did properly. I mean, Mohit Sharma was the standout, but all of them chipped in and they, they all looked to bowl decently. And we, I, I kind of wanted to see Noor Ahmed come into the top, into the side before the um, tournament started, because I think he's a very good bowler, very skillful. Um, and yeah, him, Rashid Khan, just bowling in the middle overs. They didn't allow players like Heinrich Klaassen, Aiden Markram, and they didn't allow them to, to carry on because they were just bowling well against them. And so, yeah, it was it was really good good effort from, from Gujarat in the bowling department. And in terms of the batting, as you said, Benjamin, it was basically just regulation. They didn't need to score that quickly. And so I thought that, that sort of chase, when you're trying to get between 160 and 180, suits the Gujarat Titans batting perfectly. Because someone like Shuman Gill... He doesn't want to come out and think, oh, I've got to score 200. Saisa Darson, he doesn't want to come out thinking, oh, I've got to score 200. Instead, they can just leave it to David Miller, which they did perfectly. And yeah, I just thought it was very, very solid from Gujarat overall. Um, what did you think, James? I think it confirmed a couple of things that we knew about Sunrisers, which was um, the first one was that Heinrich Klaassen will win them a lot of games, but the games that he doesn't fire, they might struggle a little bit. Now, they've obviously got a really, really strong top five. Um, but the the other thing that we've learned about them is that I think they're really missing Hasaranga. I think mm. when the when he was picked up um yeah. in the in the auction for so cheap as well, we were like, right, Sunrisers have managed to complete their squad. They've they've got a well rounded squad now. But I've got a feeling he might even be out for the entire IPL. Yeah. So that that is he a is. massive balance issue. Um, and it means that you know you have to play like Aiden Markram uh, instead, where I think you could definitely have somebody come in, an, an Indian, Sanveer Singh. I keep on mentioning his name, or um, Upendra Yadav. I think he plays for Sunrisers as well. Uh, just a good up and comer like that, and it would then balance the squad a little bit more because I think the batting it wasn't their greatest display by any stretch. I think uh, Abdul Samad did a good job of of getting them up to a slightly respectable total, but their bowling wasn't good. Mm. Uh, bar Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, really, and, and Pat Cummins actually did quite well. But spin wasn't very effective at all. And that's something that I think they're missing out on, is an experienced spinner. So, yeah, there are, there are good things and there are some not-so-good things from Sunrisers. Same for Gujarat. <laughs> I think neither team looks like they are going to just win every game hands down. I think they're, they're going to be yeah. two kind of mid-table teams that are going to be grinding it out for that, that fourth playoff spot, uh, third or fourth playoff spot. I think there are going to be a few of them. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. And I think we'll leave it there. So thank you so much for watching. 
don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to listen to some exclusive content watch some exclusive videos don't forget to become a member the link for that is in the description down below and tell your friends about us keep on growing the channel uh the more likes we get the more videos we'll do how about that um so yeah <laughs> thanks once again and we'll see you next time goodbye